Thank you very much for the invitation for this uh, panel. I hope we will uh, meet your expectations of what you expect from these uh, discussions. Uh, let me place the context of this uh, discussion. Uh, what we are going to, to, to discuss uh, are what are the main challenges of, uh, of the Greek market, uh, why somebody to develop a project in the Greek market, and, and thirdly, uh, what are the, the costs in order for a project to be developed in the Greek market? And uh, we will do uh, three rounds uh, of our guests here in this panel. Uh, I will ask them not to exceed four minutes for, 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 their, uh, uh, for what they have to say. And then in order to be more dynamic and have uh, uh, questions and make discussions with the audience. So um, I think we have prepared the ball for the audience, I think it would be good to present it in the in the screen on the screen, in order for for our audience to vote uh, through Slido. Okay. Yes. Can you please uh, bring the poll from the gentleman? I think it's coming. There we go. So uh, can you please uh, turn my microphone on? So yes, you can vote through the app. The same uh, the same system we used before the Slido. So this is the question from the gentleman uh, on stage. Which of the following factors are the most challenging towards the maturity or construction of a project in Greece? So what do you think are the most challenging? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is a clear vote, but no, it's, it's changing. It's changing. Well, there is no need to make any discussion because you know, <laughs> people from the audience know better than us. <laughs> Okay, so let's let's start. We have three companies, representatives of three companies. Um, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Christian Spitz from Smart Energy, uh, who has recently entered the Greek market. So we will have the experience of Mr. Spitz, uh, from from which comes from somebody who very recently came to the Greek market to right. develop green projects. Uh, Mr. Ipatis Musiadis, from who is a more experienced uh, developer and has experience in Greece. And last but not least, Mr. Taki Saris, who is the Managing Director of uh, UV and has experience with his company and his, himself. They have experience for, for the, from the full spectrum of development from zero to construction. So let's start with you, Mr. Mr. Spies, uh, Christian. Uh, so what, according to your experience, what, is your, the, what are the main challenges that you have, uh, you have faced uh, you, when you enter the big market? Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. You're right. Thank you very much for having me. It's not really a pleasure. And it's interesting to see so many familiar faces in this market. So, I mean, if I would ask a question initially, who was in the UK market, lift the hand. You probably would have half of the audience lifting their hands because everybody was at the time in the UK. Yeah, but um, thank you very much for having me. Thank you for the introduction. Um, we are Smart Energy. We are. Um, we're looking in different markets um, at the moment, and we identified the green market being one of the top markets to bet on for the future. Um, so we started our um, development experience recently um, from analyzing, of course, the market from the from the global challenges that you're facing that has been discussed quite in depth today, um, and um, what you're facing on the on the project side. So these two different layers. Um, from, from my perspective, the, I mean, it's um, as well quite well reflected in the polls um, that the land and the licensing of the land is, is one of the issues, simply because you don't have the cadastral maps that you used to, like we are, for example, in Germany or in the UK, where you fully verify the ownership, the long-term ownership, the changes of title, all the encumbrances that come with the property. These are um, things that you need to have a more flexible approach. You need to have a hands-on approach here in this particular market to identify this. But this comes with the with biggest challenge, I would say. And this is also reflected in the poll. Okay. If I could. Um, biggest challenges, you will allow me for a, a three, three very quick points. Number one, if something is consistent in the solar industry, and I've been in this industry in the renewables for the last 15 years across Europe, one thing is consistent that we've beaten every prediction of the Lazards and the right. Mackenzies of this world. 
So when people are saying, oh, you're going to install 8 gigawatts, you're going to install 30. Uh, and somehow we make it happen. The other point is, and where is Mrs. Karagatsami? She left us as Mrs. Duku did in the morning. Please stop subsidizing generation. Uh, let the market um, stabilize itself and find the, uh, you know, the footing within the PPAs. And we will discuss about PPAs. And the third point is, if we discuss about consumption and we look at consumption, I'm just going to give you, we tend to, we tend to forget what will take for specific industries to become carbon neutral. And I'll just give you an example for, and maybe our German friends will know, just the chemical industry itself in, the, in Germany will require 750 terawatt hours per annum to become carbon neutral and electrify its processes. So I'm very confident that looking at also Philip and sharing his vision that we can become an export um, a country, but this is going to be great. Um, challenges for us, uh, uh, it's been trying to develop quality projects from the beginning. And by meaning developing quality projects from the beginning is that we need to be sensitive on the environment. For example, we're absolutely not going to develop projects in Natura 2000, and I'm screening right now projects that they are Natura 2000. So we will not develop projects in Natura 2000. And we will engage the local community from the start. Not after we've submitted a polygon in RAI and then we bullishly go in there and forcing them to accept what we need them to accept. But we will engage them. And if the local community, not for political reasons, but for pragmatic reasons, are opposing the development of a power plant in their land, we will not do it. Right? And I think this is one of the challenges that the land if you do your proper legal due diligence in the beginning, you will figure out how the land will, will plan out. But for us, building under ESG standards, and we will explain later on why ESG has become a, a focusing point within the industry, is, is extremely challenging. So uh, Christian mentioned land only, and you mentioned land and uh, the reactions that you might face from, from the local communities and how to handle and also the volatility of the, of the sale of, uh, uh, of, the, of the electricity. Taki, do you have anything more to add? I mean, there is enough time. <laughs> there is a lot. Yeah. I mean, I can spend the whole time discussing about it. But anyway, um, I will try to give a, a, a few practical exams for the people also that they don't know the business in Greece. So at the moment, you have the opportunity to develop a, a project in Greece, neither private land or public land. So private land is pretty straightforward. If you do your proper due diligence and yeah, it's, it's satisfactory, then you can proceed, you have a lease agreement, you can, you can secure your land at an early stage and uh, get a real burden out, out of your shoulders really quick. But when it comes to, to public land, and that was the, the trend back in 2018 when we really started developing uh, uh, utility scale pro like projects. Like right? Yes. Um, so the trend was public land. Why? Because public land was cheap and widely available. So you could get uh, you could get the land for 150 euros per hectare back then. So all the developers, including us, we 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 focused our development on on public land. Most of the developers, not all the developers, um, and following the uh, the extreme interest, uh, the numerous applications uh, uh, to write. Uh, and uh, subsequently the local objections, and when I say local objections, I mean both the local authorities for political reasons and the locals for other reasons, um, public land became suddenly uh, the non-preferred solution. Uh, prices increased, uh, municipalities and ministry, uh, they have, they, they, they're raising the prices, uh, because you need, you need to get through an auction to get this land. 
uh, the public objection, the local objection, they have created huge hurdles in, uh, within the licensing process. And uh, this obviously pushed the developers to, to change route and to, to go for, for private land instead of, 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 uh, uh, instead of public land. And um, that's, that's a huge project problem at the moment because we turn it into, into private land. Private land is expensive. It is hard to get. Uh, you need to put together a lot of uh, plots in order to, 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 yeah, to develop a, a utility, let's call it utility scale project. I mean, maybe for a 100 megawatt project, you need, to, you need to sign more than 50 lease agreements. Um, so, if you like it. <laughs> yeah, if you like it. So, and, and, and when, when the, the landlords realized that the public land was not uh, a good option anymore, they just raised the price again. So we ended up with, I, I don't know, maybe I mean we, they, they started with 1,000 euros per hectare, they went up to 3,000 euros per hectare. Anyway, now the, the prices have stabilized a little bit, uh, but for sure land is a problem. And uh, yeah, if someone wants to do the development uh, correctly, they need to spend quite some time there, do some proper screening, and uh, be able to to choose the proper piece of land. So that's one pro problem, obviously, and it goes together with the with the public reactions. The other project is the grid. I mean, it is the because we discussed it, it is the, tech, the talk of the day. So I will not go into that. Uh, uh, a lot. Uh, I just want to, to say one thing about the, the 400 kilowatt system. I mean, I understand there is a, an experience, some kind of experience. There are a few projects, but it's it's not the it's it, 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 uh, it's not what we want. Okay, uh, we are not at the level where we will jump from a 10 mega project four years ago to 200 mega project uh, two years ago, and then suddenly we are jumping to 500 megawatt projects and to 400 kilowatt systems. So these are not these are not trivial. Okay, I mean um, I'm pretty sure that if you ask the people in this room, maybe one or two, that they have built projects in 150 kilowatt systems or in 400 kilowatt systems, that they went through hell to, to do it. So having developers now de developing projects with a very uh, easy, uh, very, very easily choosing the 400 kilowatt system, it, uh, to me, to me, it sounds like uh, like like uh, that's it. That's it. It's, it, it is ridiculous in my opinion. So everybody who develops project nowadays, they choose 400 kilowatt system, yeah. just like it's the easiest easiest thing in the world. So my advice, be careful, uh, design your system uh, correctly from the beginning, try to, try to, uh, to get a, a environmental approval for your, uh, for your grid connection from the very first beginning uh, in order to, to have a smoother development process later. Uh, we have heard and we know that in Greece we have uh, too many uh, applications for uh, for um, production license. Um, they are more than 65,000 uh, uh, megawatt. So, uh, how do you consider this as a as a risk for somebody who enters the market? I mean, do you think that I mean, does it be, does it this be a, a hard a, a break in order for not to enter the Greek market. What yeah. What's your opinion of that? I and mean, how do you consider? Bearing in mind all this, uh, all this that we have already discussed in our first round, because that's exactly the topic that is that is um, for us the most important one and that we're taking care of at the moment. Can you hear me? Um, because because in the end, when when you enter into a project which has already production certificate. Um, where you want to take the next steps on the on the application on the grid application, you you need to place a bond in order to run this through. Uh, when you have a large project, this is summing up to quite a large amount. So suddenly you're you're looking you're talking 50 million for a 350 megawatt project or something like that that you need to place. And on the other hand as well, you have a production certificate which is quite pricey. 
and then you're thinking about the 400 kb challenge so you're, you're coming straight away to a thing okay this is a this is a major infrastructure project that requires a lot of funds on the development side and a lot of time a lot of time simply simply because like you said 400 kb connection i mean we, we we've done 125 in the past this is a different game the 400 kb nobody really has done it like we discussed it earlier and it was mentioned okay in the wind sector it has been explored already in the past but doing this now on solar is, is a different ball game so then the time frame that you normally have in mind on the development of three four years to coming into maturity is suddenly extending okay the expectation now is probably going to be six seven eight until you've done all the studies that did until you've gone through all the processes with the network operator and this is a time where you think, okay, when you when you raise finance now to do this in the future, who knows what the off-take market is doing by then? Who knows where we're gonna be? Is there a duck curve already present? Sure, will, will sure. it be in the show? Sure, so you're coming into this um, large project, large investment at impact, large risk at the beginning of an early stage, large risk when you enter into a new market. But um, somehow it needs to be financed and somehow development needs to be financed so for the transition somebody needs to take the risk and it needs to happen yeah it, it, it is worth worth mentioning that uh, uh, the so far the biggest uh, renewable in greece have been the the wind and i don't think there are wind farms higher than 100 megawatts so the biggest project, project is this 200 project that it, it's been developed now and it is going to be connected to 150 kV. So 400 kV is a, unchar it's a uncharted uh, uh, water. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let's let's be okay just to, to have this this in mind. Ipati, your, your view? Well, grid is not something that um, grid which is not something that we, we just face in Greece. I mean, I was in, in Warsaw speaking in a different panel on Tuesday. Warsaw is facing the same issue. The Netherlands are facing the same issue. In the UK, we have the same issue. Okay? Everywhere. So we're not just rediscovering the wheel here and say, hey, we just found another, you know, another issue and another problem. Mm -hmm. So how do you overcome the problem? I think that sort of problem creates also an opportunity for the country and for the, for the PSO itself. So I would be willing and, and I know that one group as part of, of Macquarie Green Investment Group and Cell Generation, um, we would be willing to invest uh, 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 as private sector on upgrading the grid. And a lot of applications we see already, there is an expectation from the solar developers that they will invest and they will help on the upgrade of the grid. So I'm not going into details. I think we, we, we've seen we've seen what the, the previous panels have said, um, but the grid is always going to be against us. We're always going to have this sort of you know back and forth as developers, and we've seen that consistently in every market around the world for the last 15 years. So it's right? a risk that you, you development is a long term game. If you're in development to enter a market and quickly flip in a couple of years and make a hundred thousand a megawatt or three hundred thousand a megawatt when we're you know laughing back in the UK, three hundred thousand yeah, a megawatt for paper. <laughs> what I mean these were golden years. Yeah. But if you're now developers need to have a more professional, quality driven approach. Okay. This is a long term game. You have to be persistent and patient. If you're here to make a good buck and flip things, forget about it. And I think the question was since we have all these problems, right. why do you guys want yes. to invest? So I'm not the one to, to answer that, <laughs> <laughs> but I would be interesting to hear, yeah. <laughs> because I'm, yeah. you're my customer. Yeah. Okay. Why, why are we investing? We're investing because, uh, because personally, and I can, I can speak personally, uh, I share the same sort of values that, that perhaps Philip addressed in the morning. I want to be part of this green transition. I'm not scared or faced out by the six gigawatt consumption because we haven't taken 1,000 reasons or 1,000 other aspects into consideration. And the only thing I know is that 
constantly things are moving. Right. Five years ago, we were going to the likes of Macquarie and we were saying, will you take DevEx risk? Yeah. And Macquarie would say no. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Now everybody's taking DevEx risk. Mm -hmm. Three years ago, we would go with storage projects to major investors, to the foresight, to Next Energy, right. to the Aquilas, to everybody. And they would say, we, we don't understand it. We don't know what storage is. Now they do. Mm -hmm. So we constantly move. And I think this is why I'm saying that development and investment is not a, is not a short term game. Right. You enter the market, you capitalize on local talent, you invest the capital, and then you're waiting for the opportune moment to make your exit or to transform yourself from a developer into an IPP. And we've seen hundreds of, of, of examples, we don't even discover the real here. We've seen so many companies that, that successful have done it in other markets, we have done it in other markets. So we're not following, you know, we're not following, you know, just a blind leader here. You know, we're not entering markets blindly. We know exactly what we're doing first. Uh, right. Just a quick question, let's a quick round, because this was not in the three rounds that we mentioned okay. before <laughs> that came up right now. I mean, when we are talking about the success rate of PVs in, in those that they have uh, applied to, to the authority, we consider maybe 10 to 10 percent. In your portfolios, what is the the, the, the uh, success rate that you consider you will have? Uh, I mean, but very quickly. Let's let's not not spend too much for time. me. For me, it's a it's a, it's a ratio of uh, one to five. So if I want to develop 500 500 megawatts, I will have to have a land secure yes. pipeline of two and a half gigawatts. Yes. So it's it's twenty percent. Yeah, yeah. For you, the same as for where you think, but it depends on the market. Yeah, I mean, then so it's, it's too percent. low. Yeah, I didn't expect that. I would, I, mean, I would have expected that it would be around fifty because I mean, you you choose your now your now now you ask the question now in twenty one right. back in twenty twenty eight or twenty uh, seventeen it was higher. Yeah. I mean, a lot of things have changed. I mean, you remember when we were, we were developing public land, we thought that everything would be this fan and then. The regions came up. Yeah. The regional directors. So, and so, I would say the majority of the public land went or will go up again. So this really lowers your success rate. Yeah. More. You guys are the heroes of developing in Kozani with the right sort of resistance from from unreasoning resistance as well. You're the heroes. I have to it's everywhere. It's, it's, it's everywhere. Well, this plan, this plan was started development ten years ago in 2011. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's it's everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's the same everywhere. It's not it's not Kozani. Maybe Kozani got linked to the uh, digitalization and there was some more political. Right. Is there, but it's, every, it's everywhere the same. If they have a beef, they can take it with the PPC, but that's a, that's a different <laughs> sort of that's a different discussion. <laughs> Let's go to the last question quickly. Um, about the financial considerations of the development, do you consider the development in Greece as expensive compared to other countries? And also, this uh, new uh, introduction of the bonds of the 35,000 euros per megawatt, do you consider this as good for the market for you, not good for the market, and also all these bonds which are right. uh, involved in the development, like the the bonds to the TSO and all these things? I mean, How do you consider this? Uh, starting with the bond question, I mean, for, for my perspective, um, because we're looking at different markets, and I think it's, it's an administrative tool uh, to minimize the efforts on the other side. To yeah. clear the desk yeah. and to make the clock restart, yeah. and that's how I see it. So you consider that as something which is good? It's it's good for the ministry. It gives them time to breathe. It gives them time to reconsider strategy. It it gives them time to restart the clock. It does, yeah. But it doesn't set a good signal for the, for investors. I mean, if these things happen overnight and there's a new legislation happening and they suddenly they double up this bond size this can be quite disruptive mm. on the other hand i see it as a as a chance to to clear the market a little bit because every developer you know you cannot do it on your own you always need a strong partner to get through this together so in the end from, from our perspective as an investor as a swiss investor we see it as, a, as an advantage point for us, because we say, okay, we, we have really skilled developers which really have the know-how on the ground, which understand they're doing, and we, we are coming in, providing them the, the financial stability and support in order to get this going. So from that perspective, I 
it's the same in the Polish market. In the Polish market, when you go into the grid and you put the deposits down and stuff like that, these are things which which make the market bubble up and, and it gets interactive. Uh, for example, you have the Christ, um, the opposite, for example, is the French market, where there is no such a scheme. That means every developer is just like saying, you know what, we don't we don't need a strong partner, we just do it ourselves. Yeah. Um, simply because there is not this capital need and there is not that requirement for somebody with a strong balance sheet to jump in and actually put, puts it down. So I, I think these kind of tools help the market to mature in a, in a, in a faster way. So, um, do I see this as a, as a negative or as a positive? I think that um, the, the ministry is, is trying to close loopholes and we've seen many loopholes in this market. For example, uh, earlier this morning, uh, uh, there was a mention for the energy communities. It's not a common secret that a lot of investors have violated the letter of the law with the energy communities. And we've got uh, one investor, I've got in my mother, my stepmother, the whole family, you know, uh, uh, consisting of the, of the members of the energy community. Also, we've seen a lot of loopholes from the beginning, a lot of cowboys that hadn't secured the land, they were submitting polygons to riot, and this created a lot of friction. So not, right now, the ministry, in my humble opinion, is paying catch up. So on one hand, it, stands, it sends the wrong signal, I agree with you. Uh, we have questions to be answered. What happens with these bonds and what if? And we've got 15 what ifs. Uh, but on the other hand, it will clear up the market and whoever can survive will survive. And also don't forget that we are in the first sort of phase. What will follow after that is a second wave of consolidation that we've seen in every other market. For example, now more than 80% in the UK of the utility scale projects belong to less than 10 companies. Right. So it's going to be a massive consolidation round coming after that. Right. I mean, it's, it's not a good time for PV right now, okay? Everything, everything is up. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about right now. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not saying that things will not change. And this market has taught us that yeah. it, you things change. Yeah. Things change. Yeah. But, but right now- we're hitting a light as it was in 2013. Yeah. Oh. Exactly. I mean, remember we had we had we had a, a, a great period from to 2008 to 2012. Then everything stopped, and then start again, and probably will stop again, and start again. But but where do we stand right now? Um, besides the fact that uh, uh, the material are very expensive due to whatever reasons that uh, uh, it's not the right word now to explain. There are other things that um, become more and more expensive, and this really affects the, the development, both the development cost, but then the project cost. So land, expensive. Okay, I mean we had the, the cheap land from the from from the public, and now uh, you know they became smart. So they they are trying to match the the, the prices uh, of the of the private land uh, with the public land. So they. They, they are discussing now that they will start the auctions at, at 150 euro per stream, for example. So, really, no reason why going to public land anymore, with all the problems and the low quality. But the, the land is, is 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 high. The grid is high. I mean, we are discussing now about 400 kilowatt systems. Okay, no need to go there. Uh, you know what is the cost per kilometer for a super high voltage line. So. It, it's not a development cost, but if you want to do your job correctly, you would have to do a survey, you would have to do a grid study, and this costs a lot of money, and you will put it in the development cost. And, and on top of that, we have all these uh, back and forth with the licensing process, so the longer it takes, the more it costs. So I would say that at the moment, Due to, to, to the lack also of, uh, of, of political will, uh, the, 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 the development cost at, at the moment is very high. 
And I'm talking about the political will because, yes, from the central government, there are a lot of things that are happening. But we all know that uh, the game is played at the regions and at the municipalities where they, they play their game. So with this, I think we conclude the questions that we have had uh, for this uh, panel, and we are open. We op the, I, the floor is open to the. Can I make a very quick um, mention sure. about the PPAs? It was a very interesting panel panel before us on the finance side. Um, we are in the process of of, of forming up corporate PPAs uh, as Macquarie, GIZ, and Cell and Watt Group. I have to say two things. Why I mentioned the ESG in the beginning? Because when you're going to form a PPA with a, a, a bankable off-taker, let's say, let's take an example, Amazon uh, or Microsoft, they will check on your ESG criteria and standards. If you do not provide those, they will not be able to sign a PPA with you. So how you how you build up a project is is, is extremely is extremely important. And the other bit is I I would agree with you and. I would say that even when we, we try to uh, optimize sites before construction, even then we're facing issues. We're facing issues with shipping costs, we're facing issues with even tier one manufacturers that they are willing not to deliver on contracts or not to deliver on time. Maybe they are forced to, maybe they're not, maybe they're playing a game, maybe they're not. So we need to build partnerships, and I'm looking at Mr. Barlamis, we need to be strong partnerships and, 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 and be honest with each other of what can we deliver and by when. And it's critical issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> More than a hack. Um, so that, that was my parenthesis. I'm sorry for taking your time. So the, the floor is open to the, we have one question and we will tackle it in the end. Um, but if there is a question from the audience. So if there is any question, is there any hand uh, raised right now for the gentleman on stage? I don't it see. Seems, it seems we have covered the, 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 the topic very I, I think people, thoroughly. People are shy. I, I see it happening <laughs> over there. <laughs> can you see the question, yes, yes. Sotiris? So the first question so is, uh, maybe Taki, you can, you can answer this <laughs> because... I can, I can agree. <laughs> yes, I will tell you, yes. Uh, how the question is how would, uh, the we could accelerate all the the issuance opinions from from, far, from various public authorities during the IEPO <coughs> in environmental terms could be accelerated. Mm -hmm. What's your opinion? No, a million dollar question. I don't, I don't know. I mean, so, if, if, so if, if we if we if we stick to the to what the law says, we wouldn't have a problem. So it is. Yes. Yes. Is. <laughs> But it's so explain a bit. Explain a bit what is the the, the context of the question very quickly. I mean, so when, when you get when you go to get uh, the environmental terms for a project, you ask from various uh, authorities their opinion if they are for or against the the specific uh, yes. investment. So uh, we this each authority should should uh, give in return should, should return in return the their opinion. So yeah. but this usually. Uh, takes too much time. It's uh, the forestry, uh, uh, the the army, uh, the archaeological, no, the uh, archaeology. So all of this, yes, they have they have to give you an opinion. And the good thing is that they give you an opinion. It's not binding for the. It's not. It's not a decision. Mm. Okay. The things, the, 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 the bad things start when uh, when, this, uh, when the locals, uh, I mean, they have the power to give you a decision, right. take a decision. That, then when uh, ugly things uh, start. But but uh, yeah, uh, with uh, with environmental approval, I mean, uh, everybody here who has developed project knows that the delays are huge. Mm. And if you combine this with uh, with getting the land from the ministry, for example, then the same opinions that you already have for your environmental, you, you need to bring them to the ministry from the beginning. So you do another another IEPO from the beginning. So all these all these things, I mean, the the, the, the ministry are, are they are trying the minister they are trying to hard to uh, to uh, accelerate. to accelerate. But I think what they know, they 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 can they can solve at the moment the 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 details, the the, 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 the particularities of the locals. 
this is something that they don't touch, and most probably for political reasons. But maybe, maybe now the clean sweep of the project, because a lot of production licenses are expiring, maybe they have more time to respond quicker, because they have less applications playing in front of them. Maybe, maybe there's hope. So uh, the let me make a comment. I mean, the the, the ministry have made the um, uh, uh, progress in accelerating uh, centrally the licensing, but all these uh, opinions are being given by local authorities, and local authorities are not uh, manageable or controlled by the central government. And this creates this. Uh, I mean, they have their own uh, their own uh, country, their, their own state. So, yeah. Uh, usually, I don't think, but honestly, I don't think this is the main the main uh, uh, delay of the project. The main delay is to get the connection term. So yeah. this usually can be uh, can take can take some six months maybe or something like that, or a year. Yes, but uh, the most uh, important thing is the the environmental terms. Right. And there is another question uh, from the audience uh, about developing hybrid projects. Uh, I believe in in in, in uh, mainland Greece, not in on the islands. I believe this is the the intent of the question. Uh, so, uh, which are the chances for accelerating of opinion? Sorry, uh, what is your view on developing hybrid projects at an, ex an existing uh, single technology site, for example, new solar plus storage, or uh, in a wind farm plus storage or, or, or uh, solar. Okay. Maybe I can give you an overview of how we are tackling this in different markets, not only in Greece, but our general strategy is um, at Smart Energy, we also develop our hydrogen solutions. So everybody says that it's fiction in the future, like you mentioned, Carlos, earlier on. It's fiction in the future, but looking at what, for example, the Prime Minister said at the COP, that there will be, you know, the large shipping fleet, for example, here in Greece, and the huge fuel demand and everything. There's a product to be placed there because you won't change the whole shipping industry to use fuel cells. That's not going to happen, or to use electric. So there is a there's a future for it. So we are, for example, all the projects that we are developing right now on the European scale, if it is in Portugal, if it is in Poland, if it is in Spain, we always screen it as well that it has the option to be hydrogen ready. So to, that you have the feasibility and the possibility to to plug in an additional infrastructure at a later stage. Yeah. So we're going for the permitting stage and everything. And this is normally broadly discussed that then in the future there is a possibility to extend and build up the same with battery storage. Yeah. And, um, you, you get a lot of market in sense, aren't you? In a sense, uh, we, we we have a, we have an excellent example in the UK with Gritzer. Gritzer started as a as a major developer. They were also pioneers because they. We stole the first bifacial single access trackers in the UK. And what they did, they say we're gonna sell our energy to our EV network. So they've created a market for themselves. So it's how do we start thinking as developers? We're expecting everything from the state, and we, we you know we were too much inside our box. Let's start thinking outside the box. Start looking what else can we do with this product that is called energy, it's called electricity. How can we create our own sort of markets? Right. We've seen virtual more models with virtual batteries on houses. Yeah. We've seen so many models that we can copy. And they, so there is, there is, that's why we invest in this. And also what I would like to see from the legislation is to tackle things like agrosolar. Yes. So in agrosolar, we're not actually taking uh, a useful or valuable agricultural land. So how is the legislation tackling this? Are we still have these sort of restrictions on high productivity farming land or not? And this is something that I would like to see, and I would like to see a more quicker response and adaptation uh, uh, from the legislation on the technological advancements. So yes, sorry. We, we have to wrap it up, but we have one last question from, uh, from the audience here. Yeah, of course. Hi, thank you very much. And many thanks for the really interesting discussion. Evans uh, My question mainly to the Greek uh, uh, developers is, do you think that uh, concepts, institutions like Invest in Greece can be and are helpful for large scale projects or are they high? Mm. Uh, 
<laughs> difficult, uh, difficult question. Um, we we have some positive uh, we have some positive interactions. I think the bottom line to that answer is what do you actually get? So let's say you go to Enterprise Greece and you pay the two hundred and fifty thousand fees to get your project as a strategic partner. What is the time you're actually saving? And what happens if in your portfolio, for example, you've got storage? Yeah? And there's no framework about storage. So what can enterprise groups do about it? So engage with them, but be mindful of what sort of time savings can you have if you go down that route. That's my sort of personal perspective. At the moment, I think there is some value in going to the to enterprise Greece, especially if you have a land which belongs to the Ministry of Agricultural Land, because we avoid the option. And I think it's, it's quite important. And the, the acceleration does not apply with the TSO? No, no not that. anymore. Which, is, not the, which would be the most the, yeah, the crucial yeah. role, yeah. the crucial reason to go to I think it, it was one of the reasons that a lot of people chose to go yeah. there. Not a lot, I mean, there are not too many projects. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe in the early days. <laughs> in the early days. But still, there's a value. Uh, I mean, to, to avoid going into an auction and fight for the for the land, right. quite significant. So we thank our uh, invitees here and your passage for for uh, attending our panel. And I pass the floor to. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Well, let's uh, give a hand of applause to this last round before the.